Hey guys, welcome to Crumbs and Doilies HQ. Now, if you were watching last week's video, you will have seen Dane, Sally and I unboxing these beauties. <laughs> we get asked by you guys all the time what mixer we would recommend. You've seen us using all sorts of different ones in the bakery and you guys want to know what you should buy for home use. So we thought it was about time that we tested them out against each other. Yeah, and we just want to state that these, this video is not endorsed or sponsored by any of the brands that are featuring it today. Yeah, we went out and bought these ourselves. Unfortunately, we didn't get them for free. <laughs> and these are just... <laughs> <laughs> These are also just our opinions of the mixes as well. So I have got the KitchenAid Artisan, which is also known as KitchenAid Classic, uh, I think in America and maybe some other countries, and it is an absolute classic. You will have almost certainly seen this model or heard of it or lusted after it for many years. Um, I've been using KitchenAids for a long time, so I'm very familiar with this, with this model and this brand. I got mine from the KitchenAid website and it cost me £499, um, but I did manage to use their custom mixer builder, um, <laughs> which meant that I could choose from a really wide range of colours, including this delightful pistachio green, which I think is rather nice. Um, it also came with an extra bowl of standard, this little guy, but also it's part of the custom builder. I got to choose an extra bowl, so I chose this rather snazzy black uh, ceramic number. And I also got my name engraved on it <laughs> for like some extra pizzazz. Um, so no one can steal it. Yeah, so if you steal it, it's like, who the hell are you? Um, but it's a really classic design. It's a brilliantly made bit of kit, really heavy duty. Um, th these guys last a long time, but I'm really excited to test it out against these other ones. Yeah, and I have got the K-Mix by Kenwood, which comes in at around £420. However, I managed to get myself one brand new for £250, so they're always kind of on offer. Um, so before you kind of commit to buying, just have a little look around the internet and make sure you're getting the best deal. It's another kind of take on the classic design. It's not quite as classic as the KitchenAid, but I think it's still pretty cute. Yeah. Um, and it does, you can get this in other colours as well, like nowhere near as extensive range as the KitchenAid. You can get it in kind of red and black as well as kind of bronze, um, which I'm personally not super keen on. Like I love these kind of tones, they're very kind of modern. Um, and it's mine. Instagrammable, <laughs> um, which okay, it's yours. Um, which is why I went for the white one because it's kind of neutral and would fit with kind of any kitchen decor. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice and sturdy. Again, like Gemma's, it's about 11 kilos. So it's a good bit of kit, and we've used these for years. I have one at home. Um, it hasn't broken down yet. <laughs> um, they've got like kind of warranties and whatnot on them. As standard, it comes with this glass bowl. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but you can get stainless steel if that is your thing. Um, but in general, you know, Kenwood is a, a really kind of well-known, good brand like KitchenAid. So I'm pretty confident about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and while mine is not so much well-known, I've got the Orkma. It's from Amazon and it's $79.99, so really cheap compared to you guys' <laughs> mixers. Um, it's not quite as sleek and chic as theirs. It comes in two other colours, but I quite like this pastel -y, It's a nice shade. Yeah, mm. pastel blue tone. Um, it comes with a bigger bowl than your two mixers, so wowzers, <laughs> suckers to you. <laughs> more in my bowl. We all about the bowl, James. <laughs> so competitive. <laughs> I thought this was going to be friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, okay. <laughs> Well, either way, it's got two handles, which is quite useful, but I think we'll maybe find out that if you're holding it with one hand, it might be a bit difficult to pull the mixtures out or whatnot. Um, it comes with the same attachments as the KitchenAid and the Kenwood. And yeah, I mean, it's a bit of plastic fantastic, but it's not metal like your mixers. So it's a lot lighter, which is a bonus. Um, it's easier to move around, but... Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see how it holds up. Yeah, I think we're all kind of looking Intrigued. forward to seeing how this one goes, yeah. to be honest. So we're going to be testing these mixers on a variety of different levels, um, starting with the attachments, so what comes with it, uh, what you can add to it, how good the attachments are. We're also going to look at the speed, so how fast the fastest speed is and how slow the slowest one is. And we're going to look at the mixing action, which is pretty important. You want to know how well these mixers are going to combine the ingredients. Yep, and we're also going to look at the power of the um, machines as well, how capable they are of mixing really heavy doughs. And also general usability, so <clears throat> how easy they are to like manoeuvre function <laughs> and how good they are in the kitchen. Yep, and the overall quality of the machines too, how well they stand up over the test of time. Yeah, so without further ado, let's look at the attachments. 
Okay, so as standard, all of the three mixers come with three classic attachments. You've got the paddle, which is great for beating. It's probably what you've seen us use in pretty much every single video. Um, we've got the dough hook, which is used for making like bread doughs and stuff, because that's really annoying to make by hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never have, because I've got a mixer. <laughs> um, and the balloon whisk for whipping up your egg whites. Um, and they all come as standard with these three. What I would say is, ju even just looking at them straight off the bat, I would say there's various degrees of quality here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, my, um, the whisk, I'm a bit worried about because the plastic <laughs> bit that goes into my mixer looks a little bit like it could snap over time mm -hmm. or break off, um, which isn't quite as easily replaceable as you guys. Yeah, so. for sure. Attachments. I think mine and Gemma's are aluminium. They look kind of a bit sturdier, like yeah. one sort of piece mm -hmm. rather than Dane's, which is, yeah, got the metal bits fitting into the plastic, which could break. Yeah. Mine are, apart from the balloon whisk, everything else has been powder coated, um, which is lovely. But you might find over time that some of that paint comes off. If, if that is the case, it means you just need to adjust your um, setting, which I'll show you how to do later. Um, I also got an extra paddle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've mentioned my extra paddle. I got this basically the same thing as a paddle, um, but it's got this like silicon rubbery bit on, which is going to be really great for scraping. So when you're making buttercream, yeah. And, well, making anything really. <laughs> you make sure you get all the bits from the yeah, side. Yeah, that does look really, really handy. Um, as well as kind of attachments, obviously we need to talk about the bowls. Um, we've all got different bowls, and as standard, the Kenwood comes with this glass bowl, which looks really pretty. You can see what's in it. You can take like photos and videos through it, which is wonderful for your Instagram accounts. But <laughs> it's actually not that practical. For a starter, it's really, really heavy, and this hasn't even got any batter in it. Um, and the whole point in having this handle, like Gemma's got the same, the vertical handles, is that you can hold it and kind of scrape out or, you know, stir um, with it in your hand, but not that much use if it's like, you know, you can't <laughs> hold it with one arm because, yeah, it's really, really heavy. The other thing about it is that because it's glass, it needs this kind of plastic kind of ring thingy that slots into the machine, which it's plastic, it can break, I personally have had one that's broken in the past, so it's just not ideal. Um, and talking about breaking, if you drop this, it's broken, mm. right? It's glass. <laughs> you get exactly chance. You don't, you're gonna get glass everywhere. Um, so, I mean, in a professional bakery, we would never use anything other than a stainless steel bowl. And you can get a stainless steel one from uh, for the Kenwood. Um, the bit that it fits into on the mixer itself is really sturdy, it is made of metal, so no worries there. Um, just. I personally wouldn't recommend the glass bowl. Um, I would recommend my bowl. It's stainless steel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot lighter. Um, although the bit that it fits into is all made of one piece, and because my machine is plastic, um, one of these little nodule bits could break and snap off, and so you'd have to replace the whole machine. Mm -hmm. um, but the bowl's really light. It's got two handles, one on either side, um, which could be a little bit of a problem if you want to tip up your mixture and scrape it out with the other hand. Um, but we'll see how that goes. And also, stainless steel, I feel like, is easier to clean. It doesn't hold up mm. to grease as well as glass. Yeah, for sure. You can kind yeah. of chuck it around a bit more, put it in the dishwasher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a variety <laughs> of bowls at my disposal here. So, as standard, this guy comes with the stainless steel bowl, like, um, like Dane's, and like Sally's one, it's got the vertical handle, which is ooh, super <laughs> handy, uh, and especially with it being so light. Yeah. <laughs> I can easily scoop out my batter, so that's great. Uh, this model also comes with a smaller bowl, which I uh, have never seen before, so no. I'm quite um, I'm in love with it. Yeah, very cute. Um, Maybe, yeah. But it's, it's, I don't know if it's that much use, because um, it hasn't got a handle, it's small, but it is always useful to have extra bowls, because that means you don't have to like wash up so much in between. Yeah. Or if you're doing like coloured batter, like splitting yeah. your batter and stuff, is it exactly. easy to have more Or different bowl. components for recipes, yeah. uh, but obviously I don't know if I mentioned, but I have three bowls, <laughs> uh, because I did the online custom builder. So I went for this uh, rather chic little yeah, number, chic. black <laughs> ceramic. My yeah. only concern with this, apart from the fact that it's heavy like your glass bowl, is that I almost certainly will break this yeah. very soon. So this is probably display only. <laughs> 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 Looks nice in your kitchen. Um, the other thing about the Kenwood and the KitchenAid is that you can get a whole heap of extra attachments. So they both have this kind of hatch at the front here, and you can fit in things like pasta rollers, 
sausage makers, whatever a sausage maker <laughs> is. Like the kitchen aid, you can even get like an ice cream machine. Yeah. So if yeah. like space is value to you, you don't need a million different appliances. You can do it all through the one. I mean, bougie attachments, but I don't have this <laughs> cool thing at the front, so I won't be making any sausages. But, um, I mean, if <laughs> you just want to make your cakes and cookies, it's pretty all right. <laughs> yeah, which is what we're going to be testing these on. Yeah. So that's all the attachments. Let's move on to speed. So my KitchenAid has 10 whole speeds, <laughs> which I think is the most. Um, and there's a really reassuring notch between each one. And mine has got six speeds, and it's on this nice round dial here. It's not got graduated steps like Gemma's. It's really nice and smooth, which I actually really like, because it means it's all really nice and gradual from one to the next. Mine is a dial similar to Sally's, and it's got specific notch steps, and it goes up to six speeds. So aside from knowing how fast your mixer can go, it's also a really good idea to know how slow it can go. Yeah, so in our bowls, we've each got egg whites, and we're going to start our mixers on a slow speed, as if we were making meringues, making those nice big bubbles. Yep, so if everyone's ready on our slower speeds, let's get mixing. Well, Sally, I think yours is definitely the slowest. Mine and Dane seem a little bit faster. Yeah, yeah mine, my kind of bubbles look a little bit bigger, which means they've had more time to kind of break down, which is perfect. But now we need to test out the fastest speed. Mm. So let's whip these um, egg whites up till we get nice stiff peaks. Yep, it's a race to the peaks, let's go! <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Turn them up. <laughs> Mine was the fastest. Yeah, I mean, mine did take a lot longer. I mean, they're not like in the grand scheme, it wasn't that much longer <laughs> than Dane's and Gemma's, but they've all done a perfect job of whipping up the egg whites. And don't forget that fast doesn't always mean better. <laughs> so, <in the> mix <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Dane. <laughs> so, the next thing we're going to test is the mixing action. So you don't just want a mixer that mixes fast or slow, you want one that mixes well. So the next thing we need to test is the mixing action. Mm -hmm. So we've got some cake batter here and we're going to mix in some milk that we've put different colour food colouring into each and then we're going to see who kind of incorporates it really well. But it's kind of worth noting that you know, you're never going to mix it that take, like, mixes everything. There's always going to be an element of stopping and scraping, but this test will just give us a good idea of how well each one combines. And I'm not cheating <laughs> by using my uh, silicon edged paddle because I, that kind of does the job of scrape, yeah. stopping and yeah. scraping. I want to be even Stevens with you guys, so I'm just using my regular paddle. Fine. Right, well, if we're all ready, ready, steady mix. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think there is a clear winner, guys. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's me. 
<laughs> yeah, yours is definitely incorporated at the most. It's kind of all nice and even. Whereas mine, you know, the middle looks nice, but the outside has got quite a lot of colour. And obviously, you can see that mine's not fully incorporated. Yeah, and in mine, when you lift the head up, you can straight away see that there's an incorporated colour in the middle of the batter. It's yeah. just all the colours around the sides, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But, but like, even the best mixer, <laughs> I don't know it is yet, but will need a little scrape. So even this one, while it's done the best job at incorporating the green, it still does need a little bit of help. Yeah, it's not, it's clearly not as bad as mine. Like you don't even need me to scrape this to see that mine around the edge is completely kind of white still. Mm. And Dana, I mean, yeah. don't need to do um, Yeah, I mean, I think mine's pretty much the same also. It's just all white batter yeah. at the bottom. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Gemma's has definitely won this test. It's all like the, it's the most even out of all of them, but they've all kind of worked. It just means that these two, we're going to have to give them an extra little stuff and scrape as we go. Yeah. So the next thing we need to test is power. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it up. <laughs> really useful for is mixing large amounts of really heavy dough. Things that would be too hard to do with a bowl and a wooden spoon and beyond the capabilities of a hand whisk. Yep, so we've whipped up three batches of our NYC cookie dough and it's a really, really heavy dough of about 1.5 kilograms. And we're all going to use the paddle beater at a medium speed and just for you guys, we're going to do this one at a time so you can kind of hear um, the noise that the mixers make and get an, an idea of how well they're coping as well. <laughs> so I'm going to start with my one. <laughs> oh, I'm the boss. <laughs> Here goes. That sounded really good, like it wasn't kind of struggling with the dough at all. No, it was like a breeze. <laughs> um, there's one and a half kilos of dough in here, and our, um, KitchenAid do say that it will take up to two kilos of dough, so I don't think it's going to have any problem. Like That did not sound like it was coping not, badly yeah, at all. Yeah, it sounded really good. So Ken would say that they can handle up to 1.3 kilos. So we are kind of pushing this over a bit with an extra 200 grams of dough, so it could be on the edge, we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, struggling. <laughs> a little you guy. See, yeah, you could hear and see how it was kind of jumping around a bit. And, you know, we did push it by an extra 200 grams, which isn't surprising that it was struggling. It has made the dough. It looks really lovely and nice, but it was on edge. Yeah. <laughs> well, with a lighter body that is mine, I would try mine out and see how it fares. Um, <laughs> Orkma doesn't give any specifications on the capacity of dough that it can hold, um, so we'll just have to wait and yeah. see. I mean, you've got a bigger bowl, which um, is hopeful. Yeah. I do. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> about, about that big bowl again. Exactly. <laughs> Right, so it looks like mine has fared quite well. It was struggled a little bit, but not as much as yours. Um, and I feel like the bigger bowl helped. I couldn't have fit any more mix in there, but I think it's probably just best for lighter mixes like cakes or meringues. Mm -hmm. I think my one probably came out on top here. Again. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is surprising because it has got the lowest wattage at 300 watts. Yeah, so they've all got like different amounts of wattage. Just what it is. Yes. <laughs> and Gemma's is 300, mine's 1,000, and Dane's is 1,400, and that's a measure of how much power is, it's drawing in from the kind of plug socket. Yeah. Oh, and just because just because mine's the um, drawing the most power, it doesn't mean it's the most efficient because that might be lost through like heat loss or the gears, bad gearing. My gears inside are plastic, so that means that you know it's having to work a lot harder to get the same engagement as Gemma's, whereas hers are metal inside. Yeah, machine. this is like a, like a or we'll keep saying it's a really solid, well-built machine and the gears are metal and so it's going to last a lot longer and that power it's drawing is going to be transferred into more efficient horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it isn't a good idea to base your purchase on like the wattage because actually that doesn't always necessarily mean 
the best thing. But what are these guys like to use? Like, are they usable? Are they user friendly? Mm -hmm. um, give us a chance to clear up a bit and we'll come back and tell you. So we've looked at how well these guys work, but what do they like to work with? They all kind of have similar controls and stuff, but there are a few subtle differences, so which one you prefer might just come down to personal preference. Um, we're going to start by looking at the way that the head lifts up. So on the KitchenAid, the lever for this is on the opposite side to the control, so over here, um, which is fine, but it does feel a little bit awkward for me. It's a very heavy head as well, um, which is good for the mechanism of it, but my natural sort of position would be to have the control here and then lift up with my other hand, mm -hmm. a little bit like your one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I find that a little bit awkward, um, but it's all right. The attachments go on uh, really sort of straightforward. There's like a little notch in the middle and you just kind of put it on and twist it. And then once they're on, they feel really sturdy and they still feel really sturdy when there's a big bowl of dough, <laughs> as we've discovered. Um, so that's pretty good. Ooh. Hello. Um, the bowl itself is also really easy to kind of come on and off and like we talked about earlier because it's a stainless steel bowl with a stainless steel sort of insert bit where it locks on that is going to take quite a bit of pummeling. Yeah, yeah. Say. Turning them on and off I personally wish that there was a slightly slower speed <laughs> like, like yours yeah. because I think when you're folding delicate doughs mm -hmm. and stuff like a lot of the time you would do it by hand, but it's nice to have the option to yeah, do it by sure. the mixer. Mm -hmm. And the first speed on this one is actually quite fast mm -hmm. compared to your. <laughs> um, another thing I should say, and I'll demonstrate it, is that you can actually lift this up while it's on, which I'm not sure why that is a design feature. <laughs> because if, <laughs> if my mixer was up like this and I just, you know, spent a couple of minutes mixing some batter and then accidentally go like that. I mean, that batter's going to be all over me and you and the camera, <laughs> just everything. Um, so that's an odd feature that I don't quite know why it's there and I think yours yeah. you, yours has a cut-off thing. Yeah, yeah I've also got like a safety thing where if the head's up, it just will cut. Yeah, which is probably quite sensible, especially when you're clumsy like me. Um, and the last thing to say about it is it's a really heavy, well-built machine, it's a classic bit of American engineering. <laughs> Good on you guys. Um, which does mean that it mean it, it's not sort of it's quite easy, easy to like yeah. move around. So if this is not gonna live on your counter, then getting it in and out of cupboards or shelves is gonna be quite, I mean, because it is, yeah. <laughs> um, but it is also magnificent looking. I think we can all agree, <laughs> especially when you have your name on it and your pistachio color. <laughs> So the chances are you're going to be so proud to have this on your counter, it's going to live there so there's not going to be much moving around. So personally I think this is a great machine, really solid, really performs super well, they last a long time and that's all I've really got to say about, about the kitchen. Um, cool, yeah, pretty, pretty ace machine. Um, I think the Kenwood is not far off, you know. Um, so looking at kind of the head lift, like my lever is at the back here, which is really nice and easy to use because the head is heavy and you really want to mm. use your other arm to lift it up. I would say that the catchment doesn't feel super kind of secure and sturdy. It feels a little bit kind of flappy and flimsy, but for me, it's not broken, so <laughs> that's great. Um, the attachments fit just like Gemma's in a similar way. You kind of, oh sorry, insert and then twist to lock it and once they're in they feel really nice and kind of secure. Um, one thing about the attachments, it has this kind of um, shelf lip thing here mm. and I think the idea of it is to stop anything getting inside the machine but sometimes if you're adding ingredients whilst you're going it can kind of catch on, um, on the shelf here which is a little bit annoying but again not the end of the world. In terms of the bowl attaching into the machine, um, if you had the stainless steel version like Gemma's, it's really nice and smooth. This has just got the kind of plastic fitting on it, which it does kind of fit in. It's just a little bit kind of a, a squishy squeeze and, you know, just the heaviness of the bowl just makes it awkward. But um, the part that it's fitting into is one nice big piece of metal. So again, not going to break or anything like that. <laughs> to turn it on, I've got my nice dial here. Um, 
the only thing to say about that, and you probably saw it in the experiments, is because mine goes really gradually through the speed, so when I turn it on there is a slight delay between it starting, which can make you think, oh, it's not, it's not on. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on. And as soon as you kind of get used to that, like, you're fine. Um, again, like Gemma's, it's the same way, it's 11 kilos, so moving it around oh, is heavy. I mean, I feel like Especially it's with more, that yeah, it's probably like <laughs> 20 kilos. Um, so moving this around your kitchen is, again, a bit, a bit faffy, but it's pretty, so if you've got space in your counter, then lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> so what I love about the Orkman is my controls are all on the same side. So I've got the lever, which tilts up the head and tilts it back down. Um, it's really easy. You just tilt it down to, to lift up and back the other way. Um, the speed dials on this are um, similar to yours. Mm -hmm. um, you turn them around, and then it's a nice gradual um, movement to the next speed, which is good. It's also got a pulse feature, which is unusual. Mm -hmm. You guys don't have that, but... Um... Yeah, I know that's useful. Sometimes you have them on like uh, food processors, and it's just a little like... Yeah, like yeah. Um, and also my attachments, they pretty much attach the same as yours. So um, they have the little notch in there. You put it up and then twist it to lock in. And when they're in, they also feel pretty sturdy. They don't feel like they're gonna come out whilst your mixture is mixing in there. Um, turning it on and off, we spoke about that with the dial. It's pretty good. And moving it around, mine has got the, it's got the suckers on the bottom, <laughs> which is kind of annoying sometimes <laughs> To lift it up, it's a bit of a struggle, but it does mean that when you're mixing, it's not really going to go anywhere. Yeah, um, I think because yours good. is lighter as well. Yeah, like, if it didn't have those suckers, it probably would jump around. Oh, it so would slide right off the counter. As suckery as the suckers are, they're pretty move, useful. They're pretty useful. Yeah, I, I find them quite pleasing when you the sound of them. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, because you said it because like it's light, you can move it on and off the countertop as and when you wish, if you need to store it somewhere. One thing I would say about your attachment though is the spring. Yeah. Because you've got like a funny little spring that... Um, yes, I that, do. And KitchenAid used to have that years and years ago. I mean, certainly my yeah. very first KitchenAid had that. They don't have it anymore and I think they've probably designed that out because I feel like it's just a place to catch icing sugar, icing, <laughs> like yeah. bits of batter and stuff. One thing we didn't show you as well is that um, we, we didn't demonstrate with the um, plastic uh, the guard. the splash guards, guards that yeah. we talked about in the unboxing, um, but Dane's one, <laughs> Dane's one without the plastic guard when, was... making, when making icing in particular, because obviously icing yeah. sugar is incredibly fine, and it has these air vents, so when you turn it on, air comes out, and there was a lot of icing sugar Went blowing. Went everywhere. But with the, with the guard on, the it was guard, absolutely yeah. fine. Because the guard fits really nice and snug, but I think with the vents, it kind of helps, because my mixer doesn't get very mm -hmm. hot, which mm. is good. Yeah, definitely. It down. Especially as it's plastic, like I can show you really want it getting too oh, yeah. hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the usability. Yeah. And now we need to go on to quality. Yeah. So they're all kind of varying degrees of quality. I would say the KitchenAid's probably the best built. Um, we actually use some of the bigger um, bowl lift KitchenAids here in the kitchen, we've got a few behind us. Um, and over the years I've used KitchenAid and they do last a really long time, um, which is I think testament to how they're built. Um, they do come with a two to five year warranty as well, depending on which model you get, which is really good because if you do need to replace anything, they're brilliant at getting that fixed. Um, and also spare parts, like spare bowls, spare paddles are really easy to get your hands on. Yeah, similar with the Kenwood, it has, this particular model has a, a five year warranty and you can get some professional ranges that are up to like 10 years. Um, but you know, these are designed to last, they're a good heavy kind of quality. Um, like the KitchenAid, you can get the spare parts really easily um, and get them fixed nice and easily as well. Yeah, and with the Orkma, mine is probably the lowest quality, but I think it's still pretty decent for £80. I mean, it stood the test of time, and um, <laughs> I think you'll only really see, unless you've had it for like a year or two, how long it will actually last. Um, mine comes with a year warranty. Um, in terms of availability of parts, I'm not sure how easy it would be, um, but say if it showed up not working or there was something missing from it, Amazon would be quite good, I think, at dealing with that problem for you. Yeah, I guess that this is never going to show you like, the true quality of them, because like Jane says, you need to give them like, the test of time. We've only used them for like a couple of weeks now, um, and we've all used these two brands before. We couldn't really say no. <laughs> how that would live up to it, especially like we pointed out earlier with this one. 
a kind of plastic mold, things could break off it, you've got to replace the whole machine, where it's these you can get kind of like bits and bobs as and when you need. Mm. <laughs> so where does that leave us? I think we can all agree that the biggest surprise here was Yours, yep. Yorkman. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. <laughs> I mean, it's got the biggest bowl, which is great. Um, it we was... know how you love a big bowl. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, as I said before, for eighty pounds, I mean, I'm not looking to spend five hundred pounds on a mixer. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're just going to be baking really infrequently, and it's just cakes and, and biscuits and whatnot, I think this would be your guy. Yeah, definitely. It just goes to show you don't need to spend this much money. These are more like investments. And if you can, like, I would maybe go for something a bit more expensive. A bit more hardwearing, a bit more quality to it because they, you know, they should last a little bit longer with the spares and the warranties and stuff. Like, especially if it's something you're going to be using quite a lot, like in frequent baking, brilliant. Like, a bit more kind of like wanting to take it to the next level. I think you do want something a bit hardier. Like, this for me is perfect because um, I'm not baking with it like we do every day. I do that here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you know, and that I've had mine at home for a few years now and nothing's gone wrong with it at all. Um, and £250, if you can find it for around that price, I think it's really decent for this quality machine. And obviously, you know, I'm, I like the finer things in life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, £500 is a massive, massive investment and it, you, you know, you really do need to think about how much you're going to be using the machine at that much money, unless you, you know, you've just got money. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, if you are an infrequent baker, this is such a luxury to have. Like, seriously, guys, it's a lot of money to spend. So, I would say if you're serious about baking, and even if you're starting a small business, I mean, when I first started Crumbs and Doilies, I used KitchenAid, and I, you know, gradually upped my production, and it lasted so long. Um, so, it was money well spent. Although, actually, I got it as a present for my mum. <laughs> I really love this. I, I'm really familiar with both of these brands. I've used both of them over the years. Um, I am super surprised by that. I think that is a really great entry level mm -hmm. mixer. Yeah. This is like the intermediate and this is like the gold standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially when you go for all the extra Yeah, bits like you are kind of paying for that extra. Like yeah. it's not just the quality of the machine, but you know, you do get the extra two bowls, you get the extra kind of paddle and stuff. Like it's not like you're not getting a bit more for your money like yeah. you absolutely are. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, there's something for everyone here and obviously these aren't the only things available in the world. Like, go out and do your research. Obviously, this was the first place to, to, to start with your research. Um, but if, you know, if you're somewhere where there's loads of other different models available, then check it out, read people's reviews because yeah. I, like just make sure you read reviews basically don't just kind of go on like looks or yeah, like, sure. how much it is it's really important to see how other people have fared with these things um, and if there's anything that you think we've missed um, if you've got any questions about each of these then please let us know in the comments box below yeah, yeah. or if you've kind of used any of them and you've got things that you want to kind of point out about oh, them yeah. too like We'd totally be up for seeing those. Yeah. And like Joe said, don't just buy the one that looks the prettiest because it doesn't always mean it's going to be the best, I think. No. Yeah, and equally, if there's anything else you'd like us to review in the future, please let us know in the comments below. <gasps> yeah. So watch that space. <laughs> we'll be back next week with another video, so we will see you then. In the meantime, please let us know how you felt about this review video because yeah. we've never done one before. We hope it's been a great help to you and we hope it helps you make the right decision and off embarking on your baking <laughs> careers. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, you know, just to kind of reiterate, we paid for all of these ourselves and no cake mix went in the bin. Don't worry. Yeah, don't you worry. You of that. We're going to bake the cookies now. There's a lot of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Fine by me. Exactly. It's kind of the only reason I did this review was to eat the cookies. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>